Let me give you a quick definition of addiction. Any behavior that you find some temporary pleasure, enjoyment, or relief in, <coughs> and which you crave, but which in the long term has negative consequences. Any behavior. So notice I said nothing about drugs. There's this whole idea that addicts are drug. No, most addicts are not into drugs at all. Most addicts are into sex, or food, or shopping, or work, or entertainment, or internet, or sports, or whatever it is. And, it, and, it, and of course, there's nothing intrinsically bad about eating, or about enjoying a sports game, but I'm talking about the addictive quality of it, or the addictive relationship to it. So addiction is not in the activity, it's in your relationship to the activity. Okay, so I'm going to ask you a question. By that definition of addiction, how many of you, and of course it can include substances, right? By that, by that definition of addiction, how many of you would acknowledge that you've had some or another addictive behavior in your life, sometime or another? Well, hardly anybody, okay, <laughs> thank you. Great, let me ask you this, some of you, if you just raise your hand and tell me, not what was bad about it, because we already know. What was good about it? What did you like about it? What did it give you in the short term? Anybody? Sorry? Yes? Dopamine. No, no, that's a theoretical answer. <laughs> what did it give you that you liked? Energy. It gave you energy, okay. Thank you, what else? Relief. Relief? Relief. From? Pain. From pain, stress. Okay, what else? Power. Power. Okay, let's, we could go on, but look at this. Energy, power, relief from pain. Anything wrong with any of that? These are normal human aspirations, to be free of pain, to have power, I mean, power in one's own life, not necessarily over others, <coughs> and, uh, <coughs> and to be energized. The problem, the addiction wasn't your problem. Your problem was, why did you have lack of power in your life? Why did you lack energy? Why did you have so much stress or pain that you needed to numb yourself out? And why couldn't you why, haven't, why didn't you? This is not an accusation, it's just an inquiry. How, what happened in your life that you didn't learn how to handle stress in a, in a more present kind of way? That you had to escape from it, thereby creating more stress. In other words, the addiction is not the fundamental problem. It's actually a response, and it's another adaptation. Everything is an adaptation, that's what I'm saying. That's the biology of loss. And of course, if you were stressed, or as many addicts were, directly traumatized, as children, also your brain circuits of dopamine and endorphins and stress hormones, they're not developing properly so that the medications or the drugs or the behaviors actually regulate your brain temporarily. It's all an adaptation. Which means that if we want to prevent these problems in kids, we've got to recognize these kids, what's going on in their lives. Those of us that are healers or educators, uh, in any way interacting with young kids, it's our own mindfulness and our capacity to be present with their problems without panic. Or if we have panic around it, we have to recognize it's our problems. It's not caused by the child. We have to open that space for them to exist in our presence unconditionally. And then, by whatever means is appropriate, to the age of the child, we guide them towards learning how to be. Not how to do, but how to be. How to be with themselves in a way that's comfortable. Thank you. <laughs>